Today we're sailing in the Strait of Messina. Behind me is the town of Reggio de Calabria on the Italian mainland. In fact, it's right at the tip of the boot of Italy. And it's here we're going to begin our cruise of the south coast of this lovely Mediterranean country. I wanted to break away to see the world. I longed for excitement, the romance of travel. So we built a boat. And now we travel the oceans. Join us as we voyage to distant shores. It's late June and an early morning start as we head south through the Strait of Messina. The narrowest part of the strait, now behind us, is only about one and a half miles wide, and the further south you go, the wider it becomes as it separates the Italian mainland on our port side from the Italian island of Sicily on our starboard side. For most of our life together, Paul and I have worked as photojournalists aboard our 37-foot sailboat, the Two-Step, documenting our experiences as we sail to countries around the world. For the past two seasons, we've been exploring the Mediterranean Sea, and on this leg of our voyage, we'll be visiting the ancient town of Syracusa on the Sicily side of the strait before traveling east along the bottom of the boot of Italy through the Ionian Sea. From the port of Crotone, we'll travel inland to isolated mountain towns in Calabria, then return to the boat to cross the Bay of Taranto to Santa Maria de Luca. This is the city of Syracusa. 2,500 years ago, it was the greatest city in the world. All the great names you remember from high school history were here. In fact, Archimedes came up with his theories of the Republic right here Plato wrote Prometheus Bound, and Archimedes, hold on, Archimedes was a mathematician. Plato was a philosopher who came up with his theories of the Republic, and Aeschylus wrote Prometheus Bound. It was around 733 BC that the first Corinthian settlers arrived, attracted by this well-positioned port at the hub of Mediterranean trade routes. This offlying island called Ortigia was easy to defend since it contains freshwater springs and access to two naturally protected harbors, an aspect of Syracusa that's attractive to us too. Syracusa is now a quiet port whose status is that of a provincial capital of Sicily. Its real splendor belongs to antiquity and the eclectic mix of monuments encompasses the Hellenic, early Christian, medieval and Baroque eras. Syracusa is a fascinating city to explore whether you come by car, plane or sailboat. This is the longest occupied city in all of the Mediterranean. Sometimes the architecture from different eras is majestically blended. Syracuse's beautiful cathedral with its elaborate Baroque facade is built on the same site as the ancient Greek temple to Athena. You can still see the columns from the old temple in the current walls. Just down the street are the ruins of the temple to Apollo, thought to be the first of the great Doric temples built in Sicily, probably in the 7th century before Christ. This window is part of a Norman church that used the structure of the temple as a foundation. The modern town has built up around it and looking through the window I see the bustle of the city market just where I'm headed. The quality of life in Italy and Europe in general is just so superior. I mean, people shop every day because everything comes in fresh and they only buy the best ingredients for the food they prepare. 
so I'm enjoying doing the same thing. On my way back to the boat, I take the narrow streets through Artigia, the medieval part of town. I love the atmosphere here. This fountain in the Piazza Archimede tells the story of the nymph Arethusa, who was transformed into a freshwater spring by the goddess Artemis. This was to help Arethusa escape the amorous attentions of the god Alpheus. Unfortunately, Artemis' plan was a failure. Alpheus changed himself into a river. He caught her, and they mingled here in watery form. Well, we've got another project to do here. It really is a great place to work on the boat here. I'm just putting in a new Raycor fuel filter. So we're going to have, we've been finding dirty fuel, so we're going to try and get that sorted out. Okay, well, I've got some new fuel system hose. I'm replacing this old copper that I did before. Um, I started to work on the new filter. I broke the copper hose, so now I'm into a bigger project. We sort of budget for something like 5,000 Canadian dollars a year is our cost. As I say, we can fix almost anything on the boat because we built it ourselves, and that's probably why the $5,000 is a fairly affordable. I think if it wasn't that we had built the boat, we'd probably be spending a little more than that to have someone in to do this kind of work. Boats are sailing into Syracusa that we've seen in other places. The British family aboard in Treaty we met in Malta, where the crew told me why they liked living on a boat. I like it because I have a, at the back, a very snuggly, cozy cabin. And how about you, Katie? I like it because you can, I love swimming. You can swim just about any time you like. Mm -hmm. And there's no long, boring lessons in school. <laughs> We started this cruise last year um, uh, and left England in June um, and uh, this is our second cruise. We weren't originally going to have children at all in fact, um, but, but uh, we cruised um, in both the Med and in the Caribbean with two other families, both with kids on board, quite young kids in some cases, and, um, and they were great and I think Jen and I became convinced that perhaps children weren't such a bad idea after all. Then uh, we went back with a plan to spend five years um, making money and producing um, two children uh, and I requested daughters um, and Jan Julie did her stuff and produced two lovely daughters. The school thing has, uh, has taken a little while to work out how exactly how to, to, to work that out um, but uh, and of course Jan has borne the brunt of that uh, because we, we left the UK with quite a bit of work still to do on the boat. That, that took a little while. The children took a while to adjust to to, uh, to having their parents as teachers, and um, and I think Jan's probably mentioned that, uh, that that one of the the ways we found to sort that out is is to is to role play with them. So um, so Jan um, or Mum uh, is not Mum in school anymore. Uh, she's become Mrs Kirk, and when I do school, um, they call me Mr Beastly, but I'm not quite sure why. It's very hard being mummy one minute and then having to be... That's why we came up with this name, teacher. Mrs Kirk, because mummy was too nice to them. And when they said it was boring or they couldn't do it, then me as mummy would try and help them. <laughs> so when we came up with this idea of me being Mrs Kirk, then I could sort of step back and become... Mrs Teacher. Yeah, stricter and, and <laughs> more disciplined and make them get on with it. 10 times 3 is 30, and then 3 more would be 9, so it's going to be 13. It, yes, well done. How many have you got? 8. Good girl. Um, children have got so much energy, that, um, uh, and they're so all over the place, they don't sit still for 5 minutes. That, um, Being able to pick up on, on what they like is good. Um, when we're in Greece, we can talk about uh, Greek myths and ancient Greek history. And when we're in Sicily, we can look at uh, Sicilian history. And um, it is a great opportunity to uh, to spend time with the kids while they're still young, and of course they still want to know their parents because I mean everybody knows that teenagers um, 
uh, teenagers have usually moved on by that point and, and not so keen to spend time with their parents. So this is a, a few years um, when we have an opportunity to, to, to really spend time with the kids and do things. Never ever have a doubt dolphins will come if you shout. A day afloat is an adventure you never ever should venture. Sinking deep down to the shark, a pain can come and very sharp. If you drop your hat in, do not despair. Loving Teddy will comfort you there. <laughs>
is five euros. This is what we have left to spend on the rest of our dinner. Plus we've got a few bags of things already, so we're doing pretty well, I'd say. How much is this one? How much How much is this one going to cost? It's, it's a long way from the supermarket we normally do our shopping in back home until this place. Three euros left. We still need to buy a bit of local wine. We still need to buy a little bit of the local cheese. Let's go. Oppure c'è anche nelle poste, in brick. 2 euro, 2 mezzo. Sì, 2 litri di vino. 2 litri per 2,5 euro. Ok, abbiamo 50 cents left. E tutto che abbiamo bisogno è dessert. Quindi penso che magari un melon potrebbe fare il bill, ma non siamo sicuri di quanto costa. Ma non è un bill. 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 Uno e due, dammi due, un euro, va bene? No, non lo so. Uno a fare. No, ma non ho più, no. Sei monella sei, sei monella sei. Ragazzi. No, non sono una monella. I'm saying I'm a miser. No, oh. <laughs> he's calling me a miser because I only want to buy one melon. <laughs> That's a risotto with our squid and the prawn and lots of mussels. And then here we've got the tuna, just fried with lots and lots of garlic and basil and olive oil. Oh. Ta -da! Now we're in the Mediterranean. So we have king prawns, mussels, squid, and tuna. We have local wine and even a dessert, and all for 10 euros. Adventurous day. Cheers, Cheers. 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 <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. We're just leaving the Strait of Messina, which divides Sicily, which is to my right here, and the mainland of Italy. Behind me, this lighthouse marks Capo dell'Arme, which is the very tip of the toe of Italy. We're now entering the Ionian Sea. The Ionian Sea is an area of the Mediterranean, lying south and southeast of Italy and west of Greece. Our plan is to make day sails to ports along the south coast en route to Santa Maria di Luca where we'll decide whether to go north into the Adriatic Sea to Croatia or head south to Corfu and the Ionian Islands. Well, the dolphins seem happy today. I guess everyone's enjoying this calm weather. I've never seen dolphins smack their tails like that. We've seen whales do that before, but never dolphins. Uh, this is a perfect day for power boats. There's really no wind at all, and it's absolutely flat calm. He's probably doing 25 knots, which means that in today alone, he'll be able to go from right where we are now and get in before dinner in Corfu, and that's about 200 miles away from here. That'll take us the better part of a week, but stopping every night, just doing 60 miles a day. But to do that, we're only going five knots, and we're only burning two liters of fuel for every one hour that we motor. He's probably burning 50, maybe 100 liters for every hour. But it is a great day to be out on the water. I don't mind motoring and getting to see it like this. Well, we've got really calm conditions, so we've decided to sail past Rocella Ionica and continue along the sole of the boot of Italy. Our main destination this summer is the Adriatic Sea, so we can stop along the way every night, or if we get weather like this, just keep on sailing. Well, that sunset at about 8 o'clock, 
So I think it's supposed to be light around 5 in the morning. So it's nice this time of year. We've only got about 9 hours, really 8 and a half or 9 hours of darkness. So it's the question of whether we turn the corner and go on up to Dubrovnik and Croatia for the summer in the Adriatic or on to Corfu in the springtime. And uh, we'll just see how it goes. Dolphin. Wow, we had quite a night. We had a number of dolphins through the night and a real typical Mediterranean night. When I think of Mediterranean, I tend to think of beautiful, warm sun. But now that we've sailed here for a while, I tend to think of Mediterranean as just plain unpredictable. So now we've decided that we're going to pull in at one of the ports along the way called Crotone. Crotone has a good harbor, so we rent a car and head up into the hill towns of Calabria. This area is a beautiful but poor region of Italy, and there's rumors that occasionally in the hills people are captured by bandits called briganti. As we're driving along, we see there's a festival going on outside this village church. It appears to be a dedication or a special ceremony in honor of Padre Pio, an Italian monk who healed the sick and was recently made a saint. We feel pretty safe from any brigante here, as people of all ages come from the surrounding countryside to pay their respects and give their blessings at the unveiling of this new sculpture. So, Mario Montalto is the sculptor of this statue of Padre Pio, who is being made a saint, and the statue was just revealed today for the first time in the village of Rose. As often happens in Italy, complete strangers invite us to a meal and we get to try some of the regional foods. Well, we're supposed to eat the whole thing with all this fat on it. This is not your diet, prosciutto. <laughs> I'm still chewing. But it's so tasty. It's the most delicious ham I've ever had. I've never seen it had. so thick. Yeah, it's really thick and mm -hmm. a little bit salty, but with this hot weather, it's just great. And the wine is really fruity. Chin chin. Here with our new friends, chin chin. And as if that's not enough hospitality, they insist on taking us out and showing us some of the local sites. This church, built in the 1100s, was the first monastery of the Cistercian monks. It was much bigger then, but it still remains and is still used. As a souvenir, Tonino gives us a CD of traditional music by his band called, you'll never guess, I Briganti. So today in Calabria, we have been captured by Briganti after all. Briganti de Calabria. But Adesso, so this is the name of the group, is the brigands, but they don't do that anymore. The Robin Hood Calabrese. Robin Hood was Calabrese. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I forget. <laughs> By late afternoon, Cape Santa Maria de Luca appears over our bow and we're sailing now. It's been a wonderful voyage along the south coast of Italy. The winds are right to take us to Croatia, so we've decided that here we'll leave the Ionian Sea and head north into the Adriatic. We're looking forward to what lies ahead as we explore the Dalmatian Islands.
Thanks for watching this video from way back in the early days of Distant Shores. If you like this episode, please give it a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Well, bye bye Brindisi, I hope. We've been here over a week. We have never had the right winds to go. It has always been from the north and we're trying to go north. The forecast is supposed to be for force three today, but it's already force four, four and a bit.